Hello, my name's Matt and welcome to Kintrapper's virtual handover tour of our Roller Team Safiro 695. Right, this is a Fero uh, 695, it's a four berth motorhome. Uh, what we'll do is go start on the outside, going around all the elements on the outside of the motorhome and then we'll do the inside after. Here, fantastic this is, we've got a large garage with this motorhome, so you can get quite a lot in this. So if you're on the sort of uh, long, sort of two, three weeks holidays, you've got quite a bit of room to put stuff in. To open this garage, you've got two keys, it's one of them. You just turn the key like so, this pops out. Same again on the bottom one, that pops out. Then we just turn them. And then the garage opens. Inside this garage, this is where all our camping chairs and tables are going to be. You tend to have your toilet chemicals in here. You've got levelling blocks to level the van when you're on the pitch. Uh, we've also got a six metre hose in here. So the vans always go out full of water, but this will be uh, obviously a hose when you're at the campsite. You can connect it to the tap and I'll show you where to fill that in a minute. Um, we also have um, like a windscreen blackout blind there, which I'll go through in a minute when we go inside. Um, we'll take the electric cookout lead because we'll show you how to use that in a moment. And that's really the garage. Uh, we've also got a puncher, sort of uh, the jack and all for the, for the spare tyre. So if you get a puncher, all the jacks and tow hooks are all in here as well. To close the garage, just close the door, turn these. Then you want to put your key in, turn the key and push it to lock it. Right, moving over, this here is where the electric goes. We have the electric hookup lead from the garage. The bit where the, fla the flap's on, that's the bit that goes onto the motorhome. So you lift the flap, you push it on, and that's that. Then you need to uncoil the whole coil. The reason for this is the coil gets very hot and it can potentially catch on fire. So you run the coil off, and then that side goes into the campsite area. Once that's plugged in, you can then go in and just check inside whether you, the electric's all good. Sometimes what happens is the campsite trip switch goes, or there's a trip switch inside the motorhome, but generally it's the campsite side. To remove it, you do have a little lever here. You need to push that lever, so don't pull it without pushing that lever down. So push it down, pull it, wind the cable back up and pop it back in the garage. Here we have the gas cupboard. Again, it's the same principle for unlocking the, the door. Just pop your key in, out pops the uh, thing and just open it like so. And then like I say, we supply all the gas for your journey. Obviously, if you do run out of it, then you would have to get your own, but we generally supply one full bottle and whatever's in the other bottle. So what we have, we do have in the door here, we do have a spanner to change the gas. So really, you just put the spanner on if you ever need to change the bottle. And what it is, it's, it's the opposite of threads. So to actually untighten it, you think you've got to push that way, but no, you've got to pull it like so. So tightening is clockwise. Oh no, tight, untightening is clockwise. And to tighten it back up, is anti-clockwise like so. What you need to do is always drive with the gas off and then when you get to your site or wherever you want to be you turn the gas on. What you basically do, grab onto the knob on top, turn it anti-clockwise, anti-clockwise fully open and then what I normally do is go to the gas hob which is just inside and just check that you've got gas to the gas hob once you know you've got gas there, then you can then sort of turn on your hot water and other appliances as you need it. And then before you go away, to turn it off clockwise all the way before you drive down the road. And literally just lock the door as we did on the garage. Pop the key in, turn it, push, push the knob in. 
Next to this, we have a water filling point. So again, we've got a key. You can lock it or not lock it. It's up to you guys. Put your key in, turn it. That then unlocks. We've got the six meter hose that's in the garage. So you just connect that up to the tap at the campsite. Fill it until water starts coming out. You then know it's completely full and then you can take the hose pipe out, pop the cap back in, lock it if you want to, and that is that. On the back of the motorhome, we have the reversing cameras like we do on all of our motorhomes. What I do suggest is also get your partner out or one of the kids out and just help, help them see you in as well. They just don't rely on that as, as, as all. Uh, this here is the bike rack. We have a bike rack for four bikes. So you just literally just pull that down. You've got the little bars here, one for each bike that holds onto the frame. And you've got all the little straps there, which you can put around the wheels. And then obviously if you're not using it, just keep it in the up position. That, you've got a little clip there. That'll just clip on. And that just holds everything in place. We have our cassette toilet. So the cassette toilet has a little level inside. Um, what that does, that goes from green to red. Once it's red, the cassette toilet is full. What you need to do is just press the two buttons. If the door is locked, you need the key. Press the two buttons and you get access to the cassette. What you then need to do is you've got a little blue lever here. You want to make sure that the toilet is closed inside so the flap is closed because if it isn't closed and you try and pull this toilet then you'll break the mechanism so if you lift this up and it doesn't come out that easy you've got a bit of force then you know the flap inside is open you need to go in and close it and then you can come back outside lift that blue lever up it doesn't take much force at all that just comes out you take it to the chemical disposal point you open the lid you pour it down the toilet by and pressing that blue button in. That blue button lets air in so it doesn't slug out when you're at the campsite and you just empty it all. You then go in the garage, get your toilet chemical, pop it in, in there, close it up, pop it back in and just make sure it links back in over there. And then just to close it, just close in like that. All right, moving on, we've got our habitation door. This here, you don't need to force the lock. It's only little more new turns. Uh, we do get people that do sort of, they do it too much. It really doesn't need a lot. So to lock it, you just literally find the right key first. Lock it. It's just that, that tiny bit like that. It's like an eighth of a turn. And to unlock it, it's about a quarter of a turn the other way. And then you come in. This one does have a bin on the inside of the door. We do have blackout blinds. And there's also got a fly screen there as well. Just going to show you where the petrol and uh, our blue goes on this vehicle. You need to open this passenger door to be able to get to it. You open the flaps there. And you have your diesel. And you have your ad blue. We always make sure the diesel's full and the ad blue's full before you leave but you've got to make sure they're all full when it comes back again. So it's full out, full back. Also on the outside of this motorhome, on this side, is you've got your waste water, water drain point. What happens, these have got onboard tanks where all your wastewater goes into. You have a level on the uh, screen inside, which will show you when this tank is full. When this tank is full, you need to find somewhere on the campsite that has a drain, normally a motorhome service point. You literally come down here, pull the handle towards you like so, all the water comes out. When it stops, you just push the handle back in again. Right, to get into the bonnet, you shouldn't really need to get into it, dude, because we do make sure the wash, washing up fluid for the uh, windscreen and the, um, and the oil is all topped up before you go on your adventure. But to get into this, if you do need it, it's a bit different. You need to use the engine key. You pop it in, you turn it one way, and then you turn it the other way for it to release and then you have your little bonnet holder there uh, there's your wash fluid and there's your oil but like i say we make sure that's topped up before any higher and then just to pop it back down again give it a little bit of a slam and then you're in there right that's the outside of the vehicle done we'll now do the inside
Right, we're now in the front of the cab. We'll run through a couple things here. Uh, first thing here is this is your blackouts for your windows. So it's a bit like a T5 camper. What they've got, they've got little sucky things on. Little sucky pads on, on the screens. And what they basically do, this one is one of these ones. You just literally pop them on, like so. You've got one for the front screen and one for the driver's side as well. Right, just going to run through the operation of the handbrake, because it is a bit of a strange handbrake on this one, because uh, a lot of our other motorhomes, it's kind of normal, it's in the opposition. This one's always down. So obviously to operate this, at the moment the handbrake is on, if we wanted to obviously release the handbrake, we've got to pull it up, like so press the button in and that releases it like so so the vehicle's now moving but obviously it drops back down again so obviously that is the correct position obviously then if you want to bring the handbrake back on you don't need to push the button in it's just like a standard handbrake you hear it click like so and it just pops back down again and that's the handbrake fully located so now the vehicle's not moving also at the front of this cab we have captain seats uh, what I'll do is uh, I'll show you the mechanism in a minute by doing it from the front door there. Also what we have in front of this cab, we've got the reversing camera here. Um, you've got your radio, you've got a little bit here that pulls out, you can put your iPads or whatever in there. Um, it's just a manual gearbox, six speed. Uh, this one is a very nice drive on the Ford Transits, but apart from that it's just a standard cab. Uh, we'll go through the captain seats with you just now. We have a little handle down here. It's the top handle, the bottom handle is just for pulling the seat backwards and forwards. And the top handle there, once you pull it, you can swivel the seat around. Uh, the driver's seat also does this, so you can all sit around and eat at the table. And then just to pop it back again, just literally push it back and it clicks into place. Once, once the dry, obviously the captain seats around, this table does move as well. So you can move the table backwards and forwards so you can all use it. So there's a little, just a little catch under here. Just push that up and you can pull the table wherever you want it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through the main control panel on, on, the, on the motorhome. So what you need to do before you do anything is press the home button. You press the home button and then you've got to press unlock screen. Once we unlock the screen, what we tend to do there is we go into the switches. The switches turns all your power bits on. So you've got outdoor light. So if you need your outdoor light on and off, that's there. You've got your indoor lighting and you've got your water pump. You won't get any water out the tap unless this little water pump is on. Once you've got all three of them on, you can then press the back button and come out of there. You've then got resources, so that tells you basically the conditions of your batteries. So obviously the starter battery is at 14.2 volts and the leisure battery is at 14.6, which is really good. Um, it tells you about your water, fresh water and wastewater. So it's to tell you how much fresh water you got in the tank and how much wastewater you got in the tank. You can come back then and that brings you back to there. You've got, now you've got your uh, room climate. So that is your heating. So room climate is your heating. We literally switch into that. We turn heating on by pressing the heating. And then we can pick the desired temperature. We've also got down the bottom here, we've got to pick what mode we want it in. That, at the moment it says gas. If you want to change it to electric, because you're on an electric hookup, you can turn your gas off, turn your electric hookup on. You've got 900 watts or 1800 watts. So it depends how hot you want your heating and you can pick whatever you want there. And then to come back out of it again, you just come back out. Like I say, you've got your desired temperature and that will just maintain that temperature. Then to come out of your heating, so heating is your room climate. You've then got your hot water next to your heating. You can go into your hot water. You want to turn your hot water on. You can set your temperature by pressing your ups and downs again. Um, and then you can change your power source so again you've got electric so you can either turn your gas on 
gas off and we're electric off, gas on, we're electric on, 800 watts, we're 1800 watts. But if you've got your electric on, make sure you turn your gas off. Come back out, come back out again. <coughs> you've got notifications. The notifications basically will be if for some reason you've tried putting the timer on and the electric hookup lead isn't in or basically the something's like the hot water and heating is trying to find a source and but you don't have a source it'll go into like a fault or a notification what you need to do is go into the notifications you want to click into each error so you want to go into the error you want to declare the issue as resolved so you want to know what the error is so if the error is for something like can't find gas then what you would need to do is obviously number one make sure the gas is on and come to the hob and make sure you've got gas at the hob or it may be the possibility that a bottle is empty so you need to change the bottle come back in once you know for instance the gas is okay you can declare the issue is resolved and then you can reset this error so you need to press that to reset the error at the moment because we've got the gas and electric er error it says error. oh no at the moment it does say error is reset so you're happy with that you've confirmed the error is reset so you just need to go down and do that with all notifications uh, obviously the notifications at the moment for me uh, I can't clear them because I haven't got my gas on so the notifications are always going to be there but as soon as you've sort of connected up to electric and hot water you'll be fine you've also got uh, iNet X app, you can actually connect this uh, unit to your phone. Um, what I would suggest is just doing it via YouTube. I've never had to, had the need to do this. Um, I just use the settings on here. Um, and then you've got the settings that are in there, which is your time and date, and your general settings, and you've got your turn off. So I would say, probably don't turn the whole unit off. All I would ever do is just press the standby stand by it down and then if you ever want to get back into it again just pop top home button again unlock the screen and then you're into everything again right here we have the three-way fridge so this fridge either works off the engine battery but that will only work while the vehicle is moving so what this fridge is designed to do is once the fridge is cold if you're going out for the day and you've got like a two or three hour drive to your next location the fridge it will click onto battery while the engine battery is running and what will basically happen is um, it will just tick over and keep the fridge maintain the fridge at that temperature so what we need to do we need to make sure we turn the fridge on what I would do is keep it in auto position with it being in auto it will automatically find the source so if you turn your engine on it will flick over to battery if you've got your gas on it will go onto the gas or if you put your electric hookup lead in, it will automatically find the electric hookup lead. You can also change it by pressing this button in for three or four seconds and you can manually select the electric hookup lead, you can manually select the battery or you can manually select the gas. But me, I would always keep it in auto. Then hold the button in again and then we can change the temperature of the fridge. So five is maximum, one is minimum. I normally keep it sort of mid, maybe four. I don't see the need to keep it on maximum. And that's the fridge set up really. Obviously if it flashes red and this is flashing, what happens is basically because we've got no engine on, we've got no electric on, we've got no gas, it will come into a fault code like this. So you've got a flashing red so what you want to do is, if that happens, it's obviously not finding a source, so you need to either go and turn your gas on or plug into the electric, and that will stop flashing them. To get into the fridges, you just pull the little handle there, and you've got a large sort of drinks cupboard at the bottom as well. This one does have a little mini freezer in it as well. Also in this part of the, uh, in this part of the motorhome, we do have a telly. We have two TVs in this motorhome so you've got one here and one in the bedroom there there's a two remote controls for it but one remote actually works both tvs because it's exactly the same make basically you need to tune it in every time you go onto the campsite so you just need to go into menu go into channel and tune in dtv so here in the little kitchen area we do have a hob like i say this is where you turn the gas on you come to the hob you press it it automatically clicks 
and once the gas establishes, you know there's gas to the motorhome. What I suggest is once you've used this, please let it go cold before you put this lid back down. It will shatter into a million pieces if it goes down onto a hot surface. So make sure that stays up for 20 minutes, half hour. Also, we do have windows all the way around the motorhome. To open these, you've got like little push buttons. You want to push the button in. Turn the levers. There's four on the windows. They can pop out like so. We also have got blackout blinds. So you just pull out the black, pull down the blackout blind until it locates. Um, we've also got fly screens as well. And then just to close, make sure all the windows and skylights are closed before you start driving down the road again. Uh, because we don't like losing windows. They take so long to get a new one. And then we just close it off like so. Also here you've got all your sort of cutlery. We All our motorhomes come fully equipped. We've got electric kettles plus gas kettles. You've got your cutleries, pots, pans. Um, up here you've got toasters. So you've basically got everything you need. Um, we also have another little cupboard down the bottom here. And this here has got all your gas isolation valves. Please don't touch them. That, if they're all facing that way, it means they're on. If, if something's not working on the gas, please check. Because you never know, the previous hire may have turned one of these knobs or a kid might have gone in and turned it so they all need to be in that position we also have a oven and a grill here so that's just a gas oven and a gas grill moving forward coming this way we do have a toilet we have a shower this toilet door also makes up the bedroom door so you can close it like that here we have a drop down bed. This is a double drop down bed. You don't need to move any cushions or anything to drop this one down. All we need, literally need to do is just press the down button. Come down as far as there. There is a ladder up there to get, that one, to get yourself up and down. You can either have this netting up if you've got the kids to stop the kids rolling out or you can unpin it all and just fold it under the mattress and not have it up at all. There is a tiny, there is a little bed light above the bed there, which just got a little button on the side there that you just push for that to come on. Um, and then when you finish, just pop the bed up by pressing the up button. Right, we're now in the toilet area and up here is the little button for turning the lights on and off. Down here is a little level indicator to tell you how much, how much is in the cassette toilet. It goes from green to red, like I said earlier. Once that goes to red, you then need to open, empty your cassette toilet uh, at the campsite, at the, at the uh, chemical disposal point, come back in, put your toilet chemicals in, put the cassette back in, and that'll go back to green. Um, and that's about it in here, really. You've got a little basin there, and opposite there is the shower area. Right, here we have a setup where it's either two single beds. So you get two single beds here. Or we do have, if you wanted to make it in one big bed, you pull this bit over, that goes in. We have the cushions that fill that in. We have a little ladder in, in the garage that goes down here and it makes one humongous bed. So you can either have it as two singles or one really large double. We also have some extra storage down here, actually that's where the ladder is, and the extra cushions. We've got storage that side, storage that side. We also have a telly in the bedroom here. So again, just go into menu, uh, go onto channel and just uh, tune DTV. And that's it really, that's, that's everything on this motorhome. Now that's the virtual tour complete. I hope you uh, enjoy your adventure and if you get any problems, we're always on the end of the phone as well.